Hello everyone, Jennifer here and welcome to the Chic Assignment check-in for September. You just saw me reenacting Young Woman in a Red Shawl by Gwen John, who is our artist in residence this month. And Melanie Kay had sent me that beautiful portrait and she said, Jennifer, this reminds me of you. And I had to say that I really think that I look like the young woman in that picture, maybe when I was younger. <laughs> As I was reenacting it and looking at the footage, I thought, I look less like a young woman in a red shawl and more like middle-aged woman with bags under her eyes. <laughs> but hey, um, I do think that there is still a lot of similarities between me and her. So we're going to learn more about Gwen John today in the Chic Assignment check-in. We're also going to learn some interesting facts about Claude Debussy. I can't wait to jump in. The Chic Assignment is brought to us by The Chic Society, which is my private membership group here on YouTube. Membership is only $1.99 a month. So if you enjoy my channel and you would like more from it, or you would just like to support the cause here on The Daily Connoisseur, consider joining. There are also two upper tiers, The Chic Connoisseurs, whose names you are seeing scrolled down below. And at the end of the video, you'll hear The Elegant Connoisseurs and a lot of them have businesses or they're artists or writers and I have a lot of wonderful people there to share with you. Okay, since we started with Gwen John, let's jump right into her assignment first this month. We're going to learn more about her and her artwork. Now, Gwen John is the older sister to the famous painter Augustus John and a lot of people are really coming to appreciate Gwen John's work now, um, whereas she was really overshadowed by her younger brother. But Augustus had the prediction that he would ultimately be remembered as Gwen John's brother, which is uh, pretty special. And so we're going to discover Gwen John's artwork. She primarily did female portraits. Um, she did self-portraits and portraits of women, interiors. She was a major introvert. Uh, so I can relate to her on a lot of levels here. So Gwen John is a Welsh painter. She was born in 1876 and she died in 1939 and she lived the majority of her life in France. So let's learn more about her right now. Gwen John was the elder sister of Augustus Edwin John. She studied at the Slade School of Fine Art from 1895 to 1898 under Henry Tonks, a staunch advocate of the importance of a thorough grounding in the art of drawing. In 1898, she traveled to Paris and studied at the Académie Carmen under James Abbott McNeil Whistler, whose teaching concentrated on painting techniques. She returned to England in 1899, but finally settled in France once again in 1904. Initially based in Montparnasse, she supported herself by working as an artist's model for English and American women painters and for Auguste Rodin, who became her lover. Now, of course, Rodin is famous, uh, especially for The Thinker, which is something that I saw when I was in Paris and I will never forget. In 1914, she moved to the Paris suburb of Maidan, where Rodin had established a studio and held court at the Villa des Brillants. And she was also friends with the poet Rilke, who we will, I'm sure, study one day in the Chic Assignment. In 1913, she followed Rodin's longtime lover Camille Claudel and converted to Catholicism. She remained in Modon until shortly before her death, eventually building a chalet studio there. The nuns of the town's Dominican convent were among her sitters, together with members of her church congregation. On the eve of war in September 1939, at the age of 63, Gwen traveled to the French Channel port of Dieppe, carrying only an official copy of her will and instructions for her burial. She collapsed and died in the town's public hospital on the 18th of September. Her works are intimist in character, small-scale portraits, quiet interiors. Her cats are a familiar sitter, like the convalescent in a frequently recurring setting. In recent decades, increasing critical and popular appreciation of her work has gone some way towards realizing her brother Augustus's prediction that he would ultimately be remembered as Gwen John's brother. I wanna do a little study of the convalescent, which is one of her uh, paintings here. And I don't know why I really love this painting. Other than the woman in the red shawl, this is one of my favorites of hers. Here's what the Tate wrote about her. As a woman in a career still largely dominated by men, including her successful brother, Augustus, Gwen John had to struggle for her recognition. Her contemplative studies of lone women in the calm surroundings of their home suggest intimacy and peace, but also a simultaneous sadness. There is no narrative content, although this picture's title, The Convalescent, suggests a way in which we might read the painting. Like much of Gwen John's work, it relies rather on mood, atmosphere, and closely toned harmonies of color for emotional impact. 
So I, I did some research and the con the woman who sat in her convalescent painting is also this woman who sat in the painting with the black cat here that you see. It says, Gwen John made numerous versions of this painting, some nearly identical and others with differing poses or costumes. The sitter was a neighbor of Gwen John's in Maidan near Paris. Although she was the artist's most frequently used model, she's rarely mentioned in John's correspondence and her name is unknown. She is sometimes referred to as the convalescent. So she was her neighbor, basically. <laughs> Imagine if your neighbor said, can I paint you for something? Uh, it's just so crazy. So that was a very brief biography of Gwen John. She led a very quiet life. She was very introverted, extremely talented, fascinated with women and interiors. And of course, she was very close to Rodin and Rilke. But I'm reading um, her biography by Sue Rowe, and so I'm not that far into it, but I'm looking forward to learning much more about her because I find her to be very fascinating, and I truly enjoy her artwork. So I would love to know what you thought of Gwen John's artwork down below. Let us know in the comments section. This month, our musical selection was Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy, and I know that you enjoyed watching both of those beautiful performances from both Tiffany Poon and Lang Lang and uh, I certainly enjoyed listening to that this month. So we're going to learn seven amazing facts about Claude Debussy right now. He was born on August 22nd, 1862, Saint-Germain-en-Laye in France, and he died March 25th, 1918 in Paris. So let's learn about him right now. And I'm going to be leaving all of the articles that I'm referencing in the description box down below. Okay, interesting fact number one. Claude Debussy did not grow up in a musical family. Debussy grew up in a poor working class family. His mother was a seamstress and his father owned a china shop. Claude Debussy's passion and skill for music, however, was undeniable, and the family made the sacrifices necessary to start him in piano lessons when he was seven years old. So again, we see this every time with these geniuses. We see that it comes out in childhood. They show an interest um, and appreciation for it. So. Uh, that's pretty interesting. We need to be looking at our own children to see what they're drawn to. Number two, Debussy's musical genius was undeniable. Within three years of starting on the piano, there was no denying his musical genius. As a result, he was accepted into the Paris Conservatory, where he studied music and composition for the next 11 years. I love this, and this fact is from ConnollyMusic.com. Performance failure spurned his dedication to composition. So at Connolly Music, they wrote, we are big believers in the idea that failures are inevitable and should be viewed as an opportunity for learning. WC could be a mascot of that concept because his own failure to win the Paris Conservatory's Premier Prix for piano performance, a high honor diploma of musical studies, led him to abandon his dream of being a piano virtuoso in order to focus his talents and energy on composition. So he had a failure in that sense, if you want to call it a failure, but it opened the door for something else. And how many times has that happened in our own lives? For me, so many times. I've had so many failures, so many rejections, so many mistakes. And what you have to do, the only mindset you can take is to figure out, okay, where is this leading me? Where do I go next? And to not give up. So I'm glad that he was denied that because we might never have uh, received Claire de Lune from him, which is one of the most important pieces of classical music ever written. Okay, number four, he won a scholarship to l'Académie des Beaux-Arts in the Villa Medici. More proof that your losses in life can propel you to greater wins is exemplified in Debussy's 1885 winning of the Prix de Rome, just shy of age 23. That win helped him to earn a four-year scholarship at l'Académie des Beaux-Arts in the Villa Medici. Number five, he challenged traditional views of instruments' roles in the orchestra. According to Britannica.com, Debussy rejected the traditional dictum that string instruments should be predominantly lyrical or that woodwinds need not be employed for fireworks displays. He saw these instruments as capable of depicting much wider varieties of color, tone, texture, and intimate vocalizations, and he structured them accordingly. So I love that he, he to use a cliche, thought outside of the box. A lot of instruments are just, oh, you can only do this. That's why I love that uh, classical music troupe, the San Francisco Saxophone Quartet, I believe they're called, because they have saxophones, which are not traditionally classical instruments. I used to play the saxophone. And they play classical pieces. I love that. I love um, having instruments play roles that they don't normally play. So he did too. 
Okay, let's talk about his personal life, which was a bit of a hot mess, as a lot of these artists' lives are. Uh, so fact number six, Shu Shu, his only child and daughter, was the exception to a womanizer's rule. Like many musicians, Claude Debussy was a passionate man, so passionate, in fact, that author and biographer Marcel Dietschy wrote, there was a woman at each crossroad of Debussy's life. Certainly, women of all ages seemed fascinated by him, and they attached themselves to him like ivy to a wall. Between the years 1890 to 1904, Debussy lived with and or married three different women in addition to other extramarital affairs. There was one female love of his life, however, and that was his only child, daughter Claude Emma Debussy, who was affectionately named Chouchou. And so De uh, his daughter's mother was Emma Bardak, who he married. Okay, and the last interesting fact is that Debussy had an alter ego named Monsieur Croche. So let's learn more about this. This alter ego was a role he took on to explore imaginary conversations about art, nature, and other soulful and spiritual topics. Originally established as a nom de plume when he worked as a music critic for an art and literary magazine called Le Revue Blanche. Within a short time, the nom de plume became an alter ego and the essays of Monsieur Croche were collected and published three years later. Uh, that's kind of strange. <laughs> Imagine having an alter ego and then consulting the alter ego for thoughts on art. But, you know, whatever works, I guess. Um, clearly, Debussy was a genius. As far as his death, Debussy's health started to decline. He gave his final concert, the premiere of his violin sonata, on the 14th of September 1917, and he became bedridden in early 1918. Debussy died on the 25th of March 1918 at his home. So there you go. That is... Claude Debussy for you. I hope that you enjoyed learning more about him and listening to Claire DeLune this month. Chic assignment number three was to compile your fall 10 item capsule wardrobe and I'm doing that right now. I'm taking my time this year. You're not going to see the video this month in September. I think because of the pandemic things are slow to come out for fall so I'm just waiting and I'm going to get all of the pieces just right. So you'll probably see that official video in October. But in the meantime, I have been enjoying getting a few things here and there and planning my fall capsule wardrobe. So look out for more videos like that on the channel. And finally, chic assignment number four was to introduce a new seasonal dish. Now this month, I have had so many cooking videos. So I did a what's for dinner video. And I think by the time you see this, there will have been another cooking homemaking video and you're gonna have another one next week. So I'm giving you a lot of cooking inspiration for the fall. Hopefully you'll find a new recipe that you enjoy making for your family. All right, now I'm going to give you the elegant connoisseur mentions. They are the uppermost tier in the Chic Society. Amanda Dykes, whose newest novel honors the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier through a journey of friendship and hope. Amy Floor from Azalea Spa Goods, handcrafted aromatherapy body oils. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop, offering colorful literary wall art and book-themed gifts to inspire every woman to be the heroine of her life. Elaine Brisebois is a certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Download her elegant eating handbook, simple and effective strategies for permanently living at your natural weight to get started. Emily McNeil, artist. Fine art enables us to see our everyday moments as they are designed to be, full of loveliness and pulsing with life. Ashley Buffa from Freedom Moms. Learning to treat chores as a family team is the key to creating and maintaining a tidy, organized home, and it's attainable through the Freedom Mom's Smart Kid Chore System. Carrie Van Hooser, author of Tis the Season for Poetry, through the year with poems and activities for children and their families. Inspired by Nikki, YouTube channel and Etsy shop. Nikki creates beautiful aprons, stationery, and so much more. Julie Coleman from My Confident Closet, Julie helps you build a seasonal wardrobe that fits your style and budget. Lindy Sellers, health, beauty, and lifestyle for women 40 plus. Nicole Brignol, founder of Lovely Bits, organic, intimate care for women. Rosenda Valenzuela from Little Pink Casa YouTube channel, inspiring ladies in vintage homemaking, elegant lifestyle, feminine wardrobe, and romantic home. Mrs. Shockley from a Home for Elegance dress boutique, Visit her online at ahomeforelegance.com. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Sarah is a wellness coach for women specializing in helping busy women, especially moms, find manageable ways to meet their own health and wellness needs without the guilt. 
Learn more at sarahmorganwellness.com. Tina Hugal from OutSchool. Tina teaches history through biographies for ages 8 to 16. Michelle Rohr from the Secret Owl Society, digital planners and e-courses on how to create passive income from your own planning business. Learn more at secretowlsociety.org. Alan's Scottish Shortbread uses their Scottish grandmother's heirloom family recipe to bake small batches of buttery shortbread that pairs perfectly with a pot of tea. Learn more at allenscottishshortbread.com. Stern Brothers Jewelry is a family-owned, custom-designed jewelry store specializing in making heirloom jewelry into something special for the next generation generation to cherish. Something to cherish, beautiful and meaningful products that promote the celebration and gift of life based off of the watercolor designs of artist Cherish Flyter. V-Cell Victoria, your Jaffra Beauty Consultant, featuring beautiful products such as Royal Jelly Skincare Rituals, Royal Almond Body Oils and Lotions, as well as Sumptuous Color. Special offers every month. And thank you to the following, Catherine Ray, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Carolyn Haydu, Guy Blaze, Isabel Clippeau, Janelyn Voigt, Janice Leitner, Jen Carlson, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Kenry, Jenny Candelaria, Juliette Keeler Lebain, Linda Eckloff, Marie Cottle, Maria Condor, Melissa M., Prudently at Home, and The Beauty of Autumn. Thank you so much to the Elegant Connoisseurs and the whole Chic Society for bringing us the Chic Assignment check-in. I hope that you enjoyed it. I love the Chic Assignments. I love learning about these artists and getting to know more about them and immersing myself in them throughout the entire month. So if you enjoy this series and you have a kindred spirit in your life who you think might enjoy it too, make sure to share these videos with a friend. Thank you so much for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.